paralysis? Correct. Yeah. And the call letters for that particular condition is what? HYPV. Correct. And what horses are normally seen with this? Is this is this a blood disease? Is it a gene condition? It's gene. Is it is the gene condition? Okay. And what horse um, is we has they found to be the one that they're pointing back to in terms of his um, genealogy? That impressive. Impressive. And impressive. Was what kind of a horse? Quarter. Quarter horse. Yes. Quarter horse, correct. Quarter horse. Okay. And so it's important to test quarter horses to see if they have the what? Impressive gene. Impressive gene, correct. All right. Um, Dami, is there anything else that we uh, we talked about with that? Uh, what 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 kind of conditions happen as a as a um, result of HYPP? Isn't it shaking? That, yeah, you can get that. Shaking where? Shaking where? That I don't know. Muscle trembling? I'm sorry, Ellie, say again. Muscle trembling? Muscle trembling, yes. yes. What else? Weakness? Where? Isn't um, it in like the joints, kind of? No. Isn't it in the hinds? Yes, Kim. Yes, okay. Yes, and then if the H Y, what does the P stands for? One of the P's. Paralysis. 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 Correct. And so that can cause a horse to go down, right? Yeah. Okay. All right. So we're gonna do the. Um, that was a good run through. I think if you guys basically got you know the the essence of it. Oh, well, one more. What other breeds can it affect? Um, uh, say again? Paints and Appaloosas. Good job. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. So right now, I think we're going to go through the Kahoot, or we're going to go through the lesson. And the lesson? <laughs> I'm Vern Dryden, and this is a 16-year-old quarter horse. He's got uh, about a year and a half history of chronic front end lameness, um, localized with hoof testers. Did you pause it, ma'am? No, I didn't pause it. I'm trying to see if, um, trying to make it larger. To the heels. Is about uh, one out of five lame on the left front on the straight, uh, two and a half out of five lame on the left front circling to the left, and then about a one and a half out of five on the right circling to the right. So it's a very uh, common presentation for a navicular horse, and that's kind of what my assumption is on him. But we're going to go ahead and block him and make sure that he blocks out to the low PD. Okay, so. What I want to do so for a minute, when he talks about blocking, what is he blocking? We've had this done to many of our horses. What is he blocking? Isn't he, what do you mean? So he's, the, 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 the vet said, we're going to go ahead and block out this horse. What, what is he talking about blocking out? Anybody familiar with this? I am, but I'll wait. Um, okay, let's play it. Just gonna block the. Uh, where do you find? Wait, where are you find it, Mom? wait, wait, wait. See where that gets us. Okay, I and think you the, didn't. Uh, you didn't hear that. The, uh, the left front first presentation for uh, let's go back. Horse. I want you to pay That's attention. That's kind of what my assumption is on him, but we're gonna go ahead and block him and make sure that he blocks out to the low PD. So I'm just going to block the, uh, the left front first, see where that gets us. And if he uh, blocks out to the left front, we'll go ahead and block the right front. Hopefully, we'll have our uh, localization. Okay, what he's blocking is a nerve. 
He's blocking the nerve so that the horse doesn't feel the pain that causes him to limp. Yeah. It's like um, when you go to the dentist mm -hmm. and you get, what do you call that stuff you get? The Novocaine. Novocaine. Okay. So he's blocking out that nerve to see if that, if that is what's causing that area to, to, to make him go lame. All right? The nerve block we're going to do is a, a PD. So it's about the lowest you can get in a nerve block on the foot, on the limb. Um, some people have thought in the past that it only pertains to the back half of the foot, but you can also block um, the sole and uh, the palmar aspect of the uh, coffin joint as well. Doesn't take much, only about two or three cc over each side. So now we're just gonna put him in a stall for about 10 minutes and let that block set in. So I decided to go ahead and block the right front after the left front since the lameness was so much improved with the PD on the left front. I wanted to make sure that we were gonna localize it to the same area on the right front. If you don't, then you need to go ahead and block higher in order to make sure that there aren't other structures involved besides the, the bottom back half of the foot. So that's why we did that. After evaluating him with the low PD in the right front, uh, he got about 40% improved. We're going to go ahead and do a, a abaxial block to make sure that we get all the lameness resolved and uh, then take follow-up radiographs. You see so how it's moving doing better? Front PD block, uh, she, can she feel, he, can't he not feel the um, pain that's coming from the nerve? Correct. That's what the nerve blocking does, yes. yes. Correct. Switch to the right front. Uh, we did a PD block on the right front foot and got about 40% improvement. So we're going to do an abaxial nerve block on the right front and see if that will resolve our lameness. After the abaxial nerve block on the right front, we got about 80% resolution of the lameness. So we're gonna go ahead and pull the shoes and take radiographs and see what kind of pathology is there. Okay, so the blocking of the nerve resolved the lameness. Is that correct? You follow that? Yeah. But it dis did not resolve the cause of the lameness right just the symptom of it which was yeah. the pain correct yes so now yes. they're going to pull the shoe in and do what take i think x-ray yeah an x-ray they're going to take gonna say of the foot so he he, be, he begins to know where to take the x-ray because the nerve blocking did resolve the lameness for about 80 percent correct yeah you guys follow that everybody's following that yeah. but it, it, yeah. again, it, okay. yes so tiana can you start off by reading uh under navicular that okay graph, please all right navicular syndrome often called navicular disease is a syndrome of lame lameness problems in horses it most commonly describes an inflammation inflammation or degeneration yeah degeneration of the navicular bone in its surrounding tissues usually on the front feet on the front feet it can lead to significant and even disabling lameness correct so when fred was talking about um the the navicular bone it is this bone here and in that example that he showed us of the um the foot of a deceased horse, that bone was no longer there. Um, so this is what that navicular bone looks like. He also talked about the white line. The white line is critically important to um, a horse's hoof. And it's from a furious point of view, that is something they never want to, to touch when they're shoeing horses. This is another example of the navicular bone. Here on the left-hand side, you could see that it seems to be a, a much 
more spatial area here and also a different color. When it's unhealthy, I guess when it's inflamed, you see here that it has decreased in size and it is now misshaped. As you can see, this one here is a different shape and this one here is being distorted. So what causes navicula? Um, Ileana, can you read the next paragraph, please? At present, the exact primary cause of navicular syndrome is not known. Damage to the navicular bone may occur due to interference with blood supply or trauma to the bone. Damage can incur damage can occur to the deep flexor tendon, navicular bursa, or navicular ligaments, all resort all resulting in pain and lameness. Yeah, so it's very painful. It's very, very painful to horses. And um, the cause of loss of blood supply, so that usually sounds like perhaps either an internal condition or trauma to the foot itself can cause that. Um, so when we talk about a horse that's um, in pain and not moving correctly, the broad definition of that is lameness. Kim, can you read lameness, please? Yeah, um, lameness is defined as an abnormal stance or gait caused by either a structural or functional disorder of the local murder motor system. The horse is either unwilling or unable to stand or move normally. Lameness is the most common cause of loss of use in horses. Lameness is not a disease per se, but a clinical sign. Right, and it can resolve, you know, depending on what the condition is that caused the lameness, it can resolve. So we now want to take a look at another definition of navicular and we'll take a quick look at this video i have a horse who is recently diagnosed with navicular disorder can you explain this in simple terms <laughs> he's being managed by the farrier and is currently sound and rideable would any of your supplements serve my horse well the reason i picked this yeah, question ask you that. is, is that my horse, horse cody who is going to be 28 april 1st um, has had, since he was probably six years old, um, on and off lameness issues in his front end, which was initially referred to as navicular disease, was then referred to as navicular syndrome, and then by later vets and articles that I was reading, caudal heel pain syndrome, oh, and so has a whole evolution of names mm -hmm. and and terminology and this is something that I've done a lot of reading on and I think there are a lot of people out there who could benefit from hearing this answer. Okay well here's what I have found that navicular disease is it's generally accepted that that refers to the actual navicular bone so progressive de degeneration of the bone usually because of circulatory reasons. Mm -hmm. When the term navicular syndrome is used then it refers to, um, like you said, it can be heel pain, it can be caudal third of the hoof pain, it could be, there's lots of terms for it, but it's, the point is it's more structures and could be involved than just the bone. What structures are we talking about? And I don't know if yours has been, um, you found this out, but we use ultrasound, we use um, x-rays or radiography, MRI is, is very handy for this, CAT scans. Say if it's um, the coffin jo joint, um, the coffin bone, the navicular bursa, so which is a little fluid-filled sac between the navicular bone and the deep digital flexor tendon, could be that. There's a couple of ligaments down there, the impar ligament, the um, collateral seismoidian ligament. So now we're learning through this enhanced imaging that we, we have now that we didn't have you know, 10, 20, 30 years ago, that it might not be the bone that's causing horses discomfort, usually in the front legs. It could be one of these other structures and it could be a joint or soft tissue. So now the treatments that we've had, many of them to increase circulation in the foot, um, some of them for, for bone uh, rebuilding, like the new bisphosphonates, the children and the osphos. If it's not, the problem isn't bone, then they're not going to be helpful. 
So my advice for anyone that's got a horse with navicular is you've got to find out what structure is affected mm. because you could be chasing squirrels. Is that the saying? You could be chasing things and spending money and going round and round and not helping your horse mm -hmm. for a long time. Mm -hmm. So that's why the ultrasound and the um, MRI things, it might seem like a lot of money up front and a lot of work because you have to go somewhere, but it's worth it in the long run because they might say what your horse has will be helped by a joint injection, um, tendon support, something for the bursa specifically. We need to get in there with some injuries. Um, there's, so there's lots of, of prescription medications that mm -hmm. your veterinarian can choose from once they know what the issue is. And it will also help you tailor your supplement program in, in, in conjunction with your veterinarian. Um, I think discomfort is mm -hmm. something that we want to address no matter what it is. So there's um, non-steroidals for this that can be given systemically or topically like surpass. And then there's things people love, <coughs> um, devil's claw, and yucca, bromelain, um, MSM, omega-3s, hardly ever wrong, maybe never wrong. <laughs> um, there's lots of ingredients, and I would encourage you to go on our website and read reviews, because I go on there and I read stuff, and people choose maybe one of our smart supplements, maybe another one, another brand, and they found a great success with their horse in relieving discomfort. Mm -hmm. So they're like, at least I can help manage him and not have him feel so bad while we're working this out. Uh, but you'll, you'll have to get your fear involved and work on, on trimming and shoeing and maybe a footing change, maybe a, a discipline change. Maybe you know, look at your turnout and your exercise program. So it's kind of a holistic view <laughs> you have to take. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a, we're learning because of enhanced imaging. Mm -hmm. There's a lot more to navicular than we used to think. So there's lots out there. I would encourage you to get a diagnosis. I strongly second that recommendation, and I agree exactly with what you said. It can seem intimidating up front that the getting the right diagnosis seems really expensive, mm -hmm. not more expensive than treating the wrong problem. Exactly. So exactly. Your I think that's a good way you. to think of it. Yeah. yeah, it's true. Okay, so what do we take away from that conversation about navicula? That, um... That it can go on for days without you even knowing. That's that's true. What else? Um, that it's really good to not try to treat it yourself because um, you don't know if it's in. It just because you know it's navicular doesn't mean it's, it could be in the joint, the muscle, the bone. It's it's a wide variety, and they all can be treated differently. Right, right. I think that's the biggest point. What's the right difference here? between navicular disease and navicular syndrome? And this, um, I guess the syndrome you can is like earlier on in the process, where you can where you can determine if it's where you, I guess you determine which joint it is, like or if it's like the bone, the ligament, um. <laughs> where it's not to the point where the it has like as you saw in the hoof thing where it's like had a massive like decay or like stuff like that or the disease it was it's like it's been massive and you have to do have certain priorities where you can't really get rid of it but you can slow the process um 80 percent of that you you're on i love the way you um Kinda that was what your face kinda. was about. I knew it. Uh, here we go. Oh, wait, what are we doing? Not yet. Wait, I'm so confused. Wait, I gotta change this thing. <laughs> Can everybody see it? Yep. Gracie, you're gonna oh need God. to copy this great this code down so you can answer the questions. I am. Mm -hmm. Why do the emojis look like that? 
Um, Dami. The emojis. Dami, I cannot join. Why not, Kim? Oh, because my phone's on the charger and I can't like move around a lot where I'm at. Oh. Well, pay attention to the questions then. I will. Oh no, not this again. What emoji is that? Oh, that's a horse. What is this kahoot about? Waspy. <laughs> Wi-Fi struggles? You. Is that LaShonda? Wi-Fi struggles, I think, is LaShonda. <laughs> or it could... I think it is LaShonda. Is Wi-Fi struggles LaShonda? <laughs> Are you Wi-Fi struggles LaShonda? Oh, yeah, that is LaShonda. Okay. It doesn't even say struggles. It says struggles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here we go. We see struggles. Uh, uh, uh. What is the abbreviation for hyperpramic period paralysis? I like how the thing is a question mark. I'm not the with the next one. Back to. I think I'm gonna get it. I think I'm gonna get it. I think I'm gonna get it. <laughs> All right. Good job, ladies. Why does it say only five? I thought there was more people in this game. Uh, Lashon is really having Wi Fi struggles. You don't have to hold on for me like this. Oh, you see me? I'm in the top four. All right, Ellie, I'm really getting tired of you with this thing. Hey, <laughs> I'm getting tired of you, Ollie. <laughs> what breed of horse can be affected by HYPP? Um. Yeah. Who made these questions? <laughs> Mustangs and thoroughbreds. If somebody would have picked the red one, I would have been mad. Not me. I would have been mad too if it was the red one. Somebody did choose blue. Which is paints, mustangs, and thoroughbreds. Face greens. Can be affected by HYPP. Mustangs and thoroughbreds cannot. Those are not the breeds that are affected by it. Paints, quarter horses, and Appaloosa. Appaloosa. is a quick shot again. I'm getting tired of her. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired of coming in second. What are some Sorry. symptoms of HYPP? <laughs> Muscle spasms, weakness, hyperactivity, paralysis. This is easier than I thought it would be. There's like... Which one does that? There's two there that could, that are, you know. Three. Three. Yeah, that's there what I'm saying. I'm like, I'm oh, over yeah. here like, what is going on? It was a trick question. Three of them are correct. Hyperactivity is not one of them. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, that's not that. Good job, good job. It was one of those questions that like. Yeah, fire. Right, she went up on the board. I got that one because I was looking at this trick question like, what the heck? <laughs> what does HYPP stand for? Ah, dang it. <laughs> I hit the computer it's somewhere. Oh! No. Oh, no, somebody got kidding. caught up. The two, okay, I shouldn't have gotten that wrong. <laughs> that. Because that's the same thing. <laughs> periodic paralysis, not periodical. They're the same thing. No, it's not. 
Yeah, they just added an O at the end. <laughs> what horse does HYPP come from? Sea biscuit, impressive secretary or Yeah, sea biscuit. A sea biscuit. <laughs> Ileana. Ileana. <laughs> Nah, somebody actually clicked Sea Biscuit. Like, I'm disappointed. <laughs> uh oh. Oh no! My spirit. Oh, spirit. Oh, spirit. Oh my goodness! Somebody chose Spirit. Who chose Spirit? Not I. Yeah. Uh, Thanks, mom. The plank of I need to clean my keyboard. Who says Spirit though? Yeah. Yeah. Who says Spirit? We can do that later. I'm just fine. Right. Yes, yeah, I can hear you. I chose the spirit. Oh, hi, Dami. Hold on. There's another name. Hi, Dami. Hey, Mom. Impressive syndrome. Why can't I play this? Like, why is my whole or West Nile virus? I leave Did you to answer? Yeah, I answered. You know what? Forget you. Because <laughs> <laughs> when I looked right. up there, it said number two. <laughs> Please stop lagging. No, All right, we'll play equine arthritis. I'm on the pyramid. The podium, you mean? Equine arthritis. The podium, baby. The podium. The kind of one up too. Somebody is in this. Bye, Sienna. Be quiet. I'm coming right back. Ileana has six correct answers in a row. Affected horses will show symptoms when exposed to. I want to show you guys before we end class. Yes, ma'am. Got me if you let me share my screen. You got it. Okay. She only got that because I, I I didn't get to answer that one question. It's okay. Good job, Shikha. <laughs> So ladies, know that you can log back into this and play it over again so that you can learn this if necessary. So you can go right back in and redo this another day, okay? Okay. Yeah. I thought that this was um, entertaining. So I wanted to show you guys. Miss <laughs> Kelly. Yes. Shakai asked if you can let her back in. No. <laughs> uh, okay, let's see if I can. What happened? Because it kicked her out, she said. Ah. They are athletic, versatile, intelligent, extraordinarily gentle, and astoundingly beautiful. These traits have endeared this breed to horse lovers around the world. This is the Gypsy Banner Horse. Gypsy Vanners are famous for an abundance of hair, often with showy double manes. Ooh, gorgeous. They carry a sweet, refined, and well-proportioned hat, set on a strong neck. Their signature feathering starts at the hock and showers down profusely over the ample hooves. The Gypsy Banner's strength. And Why did you remind me of I feel like it's going to be hard to be a fairy with a gypsy horse because of all the hair. A large, kindly <laughs> Shire horse. I'm going to get like caught up. The strong and agile Clydesdale. And the tough and hardy Dale's Pony. All three of these breeds share lineage to the magnificent Frisian horse. Yep. 
The average size is about 14 to 15 hands, measured at the withers, with a hand being equal to four inches. Oh. Their body is that of a small draft horse, with a powerful and compact yeah. build. Variously known to gypsy people as piebalds, colored horses, or colored cobs, the resulting gypsy banner horse is now recognized as a distinct breed. They come they in all imaginable so horse colors, but are most commonly black and white, known as piebald, and brown and white, or skewbald. That's naked. Only a certain few gypsies have dedicated lifetimes to creating this, the perfect caravan horse. From a culture steeped in legend, romance, and mystery come the origins of this most magical horse. Gypsies and the traveling people of the British Isles are famous for their horse breeding and trading skills, but hidden deeply, Amid the indiscriminately bred trade horses meant only for consumption, a new breed was developed. It was shortly after World War II when a few gypsies began selectively breeding their local stock with two Irish stallions, Sonny Mays and the Cold Horse, the progenitors of the Gypsy Banner horse breed. Sonny Mays was popular for throwing a lot of color to his offspring, and soon they had a type of horse that pleased their colorful tastes and complemented their changing lifestyles. The horse was compact, reliable, sturdy, and most of all, eye-catching. From father to son, the horse type has been focused, improved, and refined to become a masterpiece of living art. In the first week of June in Northern England, the roadsides and public areas along the way to Appleby Township are decorated with colorful gypsy horses. Some blooded horses are more easy going, their temperament is more uh, maybe kinder and slower and so on. So by the focusing on that feather, creating the most feathered horse in the world, they wound up with a horse with extraordinary temperament. Back in the early 50s, I mean, there were only maybe a half a dozen colored horses and they were all in our it wasn't a desirable thing for the uh, typical Englishman. It was a reject. There he is. She's yeah. like so, of course, they embraced it, and uh, you know, all these ingredients came together. Oh. Really amazed with the way the gypsy banner horses are coming around each day. It seems as though they don't forget anything, they're very quiet. Very well mannered. Of course, like any horse, they can get spoiled, but they're just very responsive. One of the horses that we use all of the time to show is Aja Bob. And when we take him off of the trailer at a horse show, all the little kids are, are yelling, There's Aja Bob! And they gather around the trailer and just follow everywhere they go. We love the breed. We love their look. We love working with them. It's almost like a soul thing. You know, I just had to have one. You know, they were just, they're everything. They're beautiful. They're sweet. They're, they love you when you come up to them. My daughter can go up and open the gate and say, let's go for a walk. And not even put a bridle on a horse and just go with her. And I can tell you, I've never had a horse that do that. Well, their feather flying is awesome. Their color is just amazing. And I've seen some horses with manes past their knee. They've got forelocks down to their nose, if not past. And they've got tails that buried on the ground. Hard to have a favorite. Perhaps years of planning. 11 months of pregnancy and hours of watched labor become this one miraculous moment. The birth of a new form. And nature takes over. I've just totally fallen in love with these horses. They're probably the most gentle horse I've ever been around in my life. They like to play. 
they like to go out in the field and chase the ball. They like to drive. They like to be ridden. They, there just isn't anything about them that I, I don't find appealing. You, you can't help yourself. You see a gypsy banner for the first time. There's just so much magic about them. You have to investigate immediately, and I'm so drawn to it. See the reaction from people when they come off the trailer. They want to know what is that? Where can I get one? That tail drive the ground. Oh, barn. You have to like the five viper. I started thinking about. It. I get goosebumps and uh, with these horses. They just they're magic. <laughs> With the same pride and values that the Gypsy families felt for their selectively bred horses, the GBHS works to preserve and protect the Gypsy Banner horse breed. The look, the temperament, and the genetics of a perfect caravan horse. This is the Gypsy Banner horse. The Gypsy Banner Horse Society invites you to come and share the dream. Now, I thought that was very, very, very um, interesting. Did y'all remember seeing them at the Equine Affair, guys? Um, kind of, sort of. They're beautiful, aren't they? They're yeah. gorgeous. Yeah. No more they horses are gorgeous. I think there was like a horse named Zeus or something. Yeah. So, ladies, I thank you for your time. Um, this was a great class. I think you learned a lot. It was great. You were participating. Um, and I'm, unfortunately, LaShonda, I'm sorry you had some struggles <laughs> with technology. But we'll get the lesson to you. Yes. Okay, well.